Correct. He is Len Elmore here on The Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Len? Doing well. How are you, Rich? I am doing just fine. So our poll question, we might as well just get right into it. Which game do you think tonight is most ripe for an upset, Len? Yeah, uh, well, I'll tell you what. I am. Um, I-, I was leaning towards that uh, West Virginia Gonzaga situation, but Gonzaga's had enough time to prepare for that pressure, uh, and they're pretty good. It's, it's either that or Michigan, Oregon. I, I think Michigan is just a well-oiled machine, as someone said not too long ago. And, and Oregon, you know, while they are a good offensive team, they miss Chris Boucher, a shot blocker, three-point shooter. Their offense sputtered a little bit against Rhode Island. They survived that, but. You know, I just think Michigan may have a little bit too much for them. Yeah, so you saw Oregon in the flesh when you called them in the first round. What what, uh, what, what do they pose as a threat in this tournament? Well, well I, I think Dylan Brooks and Tyler Dorsey are two guys that can create shots, manufacture offense. Um, you know, I think that they have pretty good ball handling, solid defense. But, again, if Dorsey gets off to a slow start, as he did against Rhode Island, um, you know, he's their main cog offensively in, in this tournament. You know, I, I think that, quite honestly, it, it'll be more difficult to recover from a deficit against Michigan than it was against Rhode Island. So, and then you also saw UCLA personally as well. Uh, how, oh, yeah. how How do you see that UCLA-Kentucky game playing out on, on Friday night, Len? Well, first of all, I think they're two different teams. Uh, and they were in December when UCLA won at Rupp. You know, obviously – all the young players uh, have grown and are experienced. Uh, I, I still give the edge to UCLA because of Lonzo Ball. I mean, I, I you watch them on television, you read about them, but you can't grasp um, his talent and his presence until you're there on the floor watching him, watching him away from the ball, watching him interact with his teammates. You know, it's more than just what he does between the lines, but the nuance of his game, the, the intelligence, the basketball IQ, and – Quite honestly, his skill level, the accuracy, not only of his passing, but his shooting, um, you know, he did exactly what he needed to do to lift them beyond Cincinnati, especially when they were in the doldrums in the first half. Got everybody involved, created a a more confident team in the second half. And and I was just, you know, awed, in awe of his his ability to transform that game. And and that's not easy because... You know, I'm a, I'm a hard taskmaster when it comes to these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Is he the best player that you saw in the first two rounds in front of you? Absolutely. Len? Absolutely. No, no question. question. Huh. And he's ready. You think he's ready for the next level, for sure. Yeah, Re- top, yeah I do. Top two. I, top I really three. do. And, and, and when I'm talking about ready, I'm not talking about he's going to have gaudy stats and score and, you know, 20 points a game, this and that, but he is going to make any team that he's on, he's going to make them better. Remember last year, UCLA was 15 and 17. Mm-hmm. And yes, TJ Leaf is a heck of a player. And some of these other guys that are, are now playing better, he's made Bryce Alford a better player. You know, he's made Hamilton, he's made holiday better players. And certainly he's made Leaf a better player. I, I think without him, they improve, maybe win 20 games, but they do not win you know, the games that they've won, what are they, uh, won over 30 games? No, 29, 30 games they've won, or 31 games. And, and that's all because of Lonzo Ball. Well, I mean, in terms of him making people better players, Len, I think his greatest achievement is I think he made LeVar Ball a better player, right? <laughs> the way that he's playing. Uh, it, LeVar, LeVar is suddenly, you know, beating Michael Jordan and uh, and Charles in one-on-ones now, right, Len? Yeah, he's he's helped LeVar up his game a little bit, man. That vicarious <laughs> living, nothing like it. <laughs> Did you see LeVar? Was he uh, at, at any of those games? Uh, I'm not sure. I wasn't paying any attention to LeVar. This wasn't about LeVar. These games were about uh, UCLA and about, you know, his son Lonzo and, and their exploits. Um, you know, I almost feel sorry if there's any reason to feel sorry for Lonzo. I feel sorry for that added noise that he's got to deal with and, you know, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in in, in the household in the, in the dining room, listening to him <laughs> probably tell his father, "Dad, chill, please." Well, well, I mean, I don't. Let Let's just hit hit on this for one more second before we move on with Len Elmore and the Honda Insider Report. Because I mean, ask Cincinnati how it affected Lonzo, right? I, I don't. I, it doesn't seem to be affecting him at all when you look no, at and, it and so maybe far. He's on. Unfl- yeah, maybe he's unflappable, but he's still human, and I cannot believe 
that it isn't a burden. It's a burden that his shoulders are broad enough to carry, but I, I can't believe that it's not a burden that you know he has to deal with, and he's dealt with it extraordinarily well. So now when it all comes down to it, uh, I mentioned this to Charles when he was on Monday, and uh, he disagreed. Feel free to do the same. Any of the 16 teams does have a four-game winning streak within them based on just seeing the rest of the – the uh, the teams in it and the parity that we did see in some way, shape, and form over the first two rounds. What do you think, Len? Um, I, actually, I would agree. I, I would agree. I, as the teams that I think probably on the bot on the lower end of that would be a South Carolina, would be a Butler, um, and maybe even Wisconsin. But and actually, I take it back. You know, now I'm naming four teams and sure. Xavier as well. But it doesn't mean that they can't. I just don't see them having you know, enough of transcendent players to be able to carry them uh, for those four games. But, you know, obviously, it's just one man's opinion. No, of course. No, I just I, just the way that South Carolina, just they just spanked Duke. I mean, they, they really did. I mean, they hung with them in the first half, and then the second half, they just put Duke over their knee and spanked him. There's just no way they were to put it. And I, I just, I just kind of like the way that the Gamecocks looked in the first two weeks and how they can play defense and how they can – Get out and transition, Len. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of liking what I saw out of them the first two weeks and what they can do over the next four games. I'm just throwing them out at you. Yeah, I mean, look, like you said, anybody can do it. But I, but I think that Carolina, uh, South Carolina against Duke, as I mentioned, some of the other so-called upsets, they're matchup situations. And South Carolina is a bunch of athletes. Uh, you know, they've got guys with experience against a young Duke team. And, and look, I mean, truth be told, we uh, <laughs> we always overestimate, in many instances, the young Duke teams. Now, when they've had guys who've got some years under their belt mixed with the young players, I'd say, okay, you know, this is a team that, that has an opportunity, but they're still sophomores and freshmen. And, and South Carolina has some guys that, you know, have experience under their belt, and the athletes and that maturity help carry them. Um, I don't know, against the Baylor team that has the same – type of athletes and the same type of maturity. I just think Baylor has been consistently better than South Carolina throughout the season. But again, who knows? A couple more minutes with CBS Sports. Len Elmore here on the Honda Insider Report on the Rich Eisen Show. Your eight years in the NBA, a couple years in the ABA. You're the president of the National Basketball Retired Players Association. Len, what do I you... Was. Oh, you were. Okay. What, what, yeah. were, what do you make of this conversation we're having? Uh, on the association level right now about players resting um, on occasion, star players resting on occasion, uh, much to the dismay of the paying customer that comes and shows up uh, for uh, the pleasure of watching them play. What do, what do you think of this, Len? Well, well, first of all, I think the, the argument's been mischaracterized to the point where, you know, LeBron James or someone will say it's, it's about me resting, et cetera, et cetera. Look, it, it's, in time in memoriam, stars have had to take a day off here and there, whether it's injury or whether it's just getting a day's rest. I think the problem is when you rest more than one, multi, you know, multiple stars on teams and people, you know, most of the marquee teams have multiple stars. You know, if you're going to rest, and let's hy hypothetically say, if you're going to rest Durant, Curry, and Thompson at the same time, I mean, you are, um, you know, you, you're really – Fraud, defrauding the paying customer and the television uh, networks who are paying the money. That's not what it's about. Coaches are smart enough to be able to, um, you know, manage resting guys on an individual basis and give them an opportunity to, you know, to catch up, to catch their breath and, and to heal. But, um, you know, when you start resting multiple guys, to me, that's thumbing your nose at your, your basic constituency. And, and in the long run, that's not going to be helpful. So what does the league do? What's the solution? Um, well, I mean, if they could sit down and quantify the potential problems and issues that they would have, um, you know, obviously Adam Silver wants the owners to have more input in, in what happens uh, from the wrestling standpoint because the owners are more bottom line oriented. I think that's that's important enough. I mean, the short of an edict that says you can't rest, you know, uh, more than – you know, one star at a time, so to speak, how that's defined. Uh, you know, I think that's the best way to do it, get the owners involved who recognize the bottom line 
in a broader sense and see that it's going to be more destructive than helpful in the long run. Glenn, thanks for the time. Appreciate your uh, your call in the games. I enjoy listening to you, and I uh, appreciate you calling in. Thank you. Oh, thanks for having me, Rich. Always. It. You got it. That's uh, Len Elmore from CBS. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.